19 burning questions answered about Giga Texas. I asked you clever robots what you really wanted to know about Giga Texas, and you didn't disappoint. So here are your top 19 with answers. I'm Brian. Welcome to My Tesla Weekend. So let's get into last week's burning questions and get them answered. If you still have questions after this, post them below and I'll answer them next week if there's enough interest. And they don't have to be about Giga Texas. Feel free to go as nuts as you like. And I'll, you know, answer the ones that aren't too crazy. There are timestamps to each of the questions if you want to skip around. What car do they start manufacturing first there? The Model Y. It's official. The castings they've made are for the Model Y. The paint shop is needed for exactly that. This has been um, stated and reiterated by Tesla. It is official. Model Y comes first. I don't think it can begin production for a while yet due to some half of the General Assembly area not beginning interior work yet. Not a question, but still worth addressing. Sure it can. Last week's update showed that all the areas critical to Model Y production have been underway for months, and the rest of the factory will likely be for Cybertruck, possibly other future models as well, like the Roadster, Semi, some as yet unknown product. Bear in mind that Giga Shanghai entered production with just 10% of parts sourced locally. To this day, they still don't make their own battery cells on site. If they can ship 90% of the parts to Shanghai for assembly, they can definitely get them to Austin. And remember, the Model 3s and Model Ys are sometimes built in tents. So what is Tesla going to do with all the land? I heard of battery facilities and some other interesting things like across the highway. We don't know. The rumor from workers on the ground, as reported by Brad Sloan, is that the building west of the highway will be offices. And Joe Tetmeyer has seen permits suggesting the area to the east of the power lines will be for a battery cathode production building. As for the rest of the site, the parts where ground isn't really broken yet, I think that's just a way to future-proof the location against running out of land. Fremont was considered far too big to use, but they're out of space. Shanghai was considered way too big as well, and they're also out of land. So Texas has a lot of room to grow. Any updates on the 4680 cell production? Uh, no real updates from Tesla, apart from the construction of a plant to make them at Giga Berlin, as well as here in Giga Texas. Any word on any other companies producing them? Panasonic and LG are both planning to make cells in this form factor, though there's no word yet on whether those would employ Tesla's tabless design or the dry electrode manufacturing process. Any new machines that have come in? The only new pieces of big stuff we've seen delivered in the last few weeks would be an additional furnace to melt the aluminum for the gigapresses, some bridge cranes, and the prefab supercharger newly installed in the parking lot. Other than that, it's pipes and vents and fairly normal things. Any new photos of the interior? There is a leaked video of the paint shop that didn't seem to get much attention, but it's only a few seconds long and not very revealing, but still, it's something. When could the rest of the walls go up? The rest of the walls will likely go up as soon as the concrete is poured on all the floors. There are walls for everything critical to Model Y production, and that seems to be the focus of the site right now. Why are the alleys taking so long? The alleys have been kept open to allow access from as many sides as possible. As long as the crane is needed somewhere deep in the footprint, a path to reach it is necessary. We saw footings poured in the narrow alley last week, and steel has been staged for imminent erection in the central corridor, so those should both be closing up pretty soon, next week or two, I would say. Wasn't Panasonic supposed to be making the 4680s at Giga Nevada? Quite possibly. We know Panasonic intends to make them, and I believe that could include at Giga Nevada, but we don't yet have absolute confirmation just yet. Using traditional methods, it wouldn't be a monumental task to simply change the size of the cell. That's not 
impossible retooling. What's not known is if that would provide the necessary benefit or if they have to make a bigger changes to the line to accommodate the tabless design. The one caveat to start production soon is that, unless I'm mistaken, Elon mentioned that the cars produced in Texas would have the 4680 batteries from the start. Possibly, but not definitely. 4680 is just the shape of the battery, not necessarily what's going on inside. Panasonic could set up a line to make them using traditional methods and chemistry fairly easily, and they already announced plans to do just that. So one possibility is that the cells of that shape are made and used for the Model Y, perhaps for non-performance models, while the manufacturing process is completed for the tabless and or dry electrode versions. It's also possible that 4680s from the Cato Road facility could be used. It's believed currently that these are being stockpiled for use in Berlin, but depending on how big that stockpile is, they could also be used in Texas. Another possibility is that, like with the new Plaid Model S, they'll continue with the existing cells at first, with plans to move to the newer design once it's ready. I think the central area has as many footings as it is going to get. Well, that's definitely a possibility, but I think it's pretty unlikely, since the biggest advantage to doing so would be to have loading dock access to more of the building. There are no loading docks along the central corridor, so the benefit to leaving it open would be minimal. Plans have changed repeatedly over time, but the green walls are very new, and there's nothing that looks to suggest loading docks will be added, so it strikes me as pretty unlikely. If they don't expand the structure into this area, the building would be a lot closer to done than we realized. Why has Giga Nevada never been fully completed before starting other factories? Does anyone know? Are they ever going to finish the Nevada factory? Why was work on it abandoned? A few reasons, but the biggest one is that it doesn't need to be any bigger than it is. When the project was announced, the factory would have needed to reach its originally planned footprint to produce the quantity of batteries needed. Improvements in manufacturing have reduced the need for the larger footprint. In 2014, it would have required the entire global output of lithium-ion batteries to make 500,000 cars. Well, the tech has gotten a lot better, but why not just expand there rather than building a battery factory at Berlin and Austin? Well, the answer to that is there may be a shortage of talent in Reno. It's a small market. It's very easy to run out of qualified engineers interested in working on a particular project, and it can prove difficult to relocate the number of workers needed. So if they're likely to start Model Y production soon, any insights on when the Cybertruck will start production? What has to be completed in the factory for that to start? So this is the hardest question, and the answer is the absolute worst. The short answer is they need a lot, but the longer answer is that they need almost everything, apart from a working paint shop, which is, sadly, the one thing they appear to actually have. The first thing they need is to finish the building. The areas critical to Model Y are looking pretty sharp, but the rest of the factory is woefully incomplete. There aren't even footings in some of the areas likely to be used for the Cybertruck. Then they need the 8,000 ton presses, which will be used for the front and rear assemblies, which as far as we know, haven't even been completed yet, let alone shipped and configured and tested. Then they need the 4680 batteries, and they need them in a quantity unlikely to be supplied from other locations. The battery plant in Austin is still under construction. Then they need the equipment to fold the stainless steel exoskeleton, which we have yet to see at the site. It's likely the seats would be made right here in this location in Austin, and that equipment isn't in yet. So in essence, what's needed still is everything, apart from the cameras, chips, and apparently the steering wheel. When are you doing another interview with Jeff? Is this something you guys want? I mean, I can talk to him about it if there's interest. Jeff is a, a very fun guy, and I'd be happy to do that. Let me know in the comments. When are you getting interviewed by Dave Lee or Warren Redlick? 
Well, I've talked with Warren about interviewing him, and we're trying to figure out a time that works with his schedule, but I don't know if he's interested in interviewing me. I think the accuracy of my Q2 predictions could be pretty interesting to his viewers, but that's his call. If you haven't checked out his channel, he's pretty insightful and has a great no-nonsense approach that I find refreshing. I reached out to Dave Lee about being a guest on my channel after his stunningly accurate Q1 financial estimate, but I never heard back from him. I I'd be delighted to be a guest on either of those shows, or really any shows, um, but we'll see. When are you going to start tracking SpaceX activities? Well, which ones? I think the teams in Boca Chica, Everyday Astronaut, Boca Chica Gal, I think they all do a pretty fantastic job already. But if there's something that needs to be tracked that isn't yet getting attention, let me know and I'll take a look. When will first Model Y deliveries be? Well, my crystal ball's in the shop, but I'm reasonably confident we'll see trial production in Q3 and customer deliveries in Q4. This isn't one of my mathematical predictions, though, so consider it more guess than guess to math. When will the first starship land safely on Mars? <sighs> okay, so I'm ready for the hate, so here we go. Sometime between 2031 and never, with decent money on never. Starship is truly a massive beast. Nothing of that size has ever been landed anywhere. The heaviest thing ever landed on Mars is the Perseverance rover at 2,000 pounds, 2260. It's 1,000 kilograms. And a starship is more like 11 million pounds. So, uh, you know, it's 480,000 times heavier than the heaviest thing we've successfully landed on Mars. While this could be done, perhaps, as a demonstration as early as 2031, doing so with any sort of real scientific benefit would be a lot later than that, since developing a scientific payload would take years by itself, and I'm not sure the cost and benefits would actually pan out. To get a Starship to Mars, you'd need to launch one, refuel it in flight, which SpaceX is working on as part of the Artemis mission to the moon, and then send it to Mars unmanned. I mean, I guess the cost isn't that bad if it's an early Starship they're looking to retire anyhow, but it's an absolutely monumental feat and one that, I don't know, man, I don't know, it just seems, seems pretty impossible. And, by the way, I do hope that I'm wrong. So that's it. Those are the questions. Those are the answers. Hey, man, let's do this again next week with all the questions that still need to be asked. What can I answer for you guys? So what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me all your clever insight in the comments below and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots in these dog days of summer.